G'day guys, Roscoe here. About an hour ago, I arrived home from a uh, yeah, big day on the mould. I uh, had um, red gel coats splattered all over my face. I had it all over my hands. I had it down my shins. I had it on my bum. It was everywhere. And I mean, fair dinkum, I looked like I'd been in a Viking war zone. It looked like I'd been running through the fields with an axe. You know, I was, I was just absolutely putrid. And, and it's just so nice to get home after a massive days up there um, and have a shower and just sit down and think about the, <laughs> the enormity of what I've taken on. When we bought the mould down from Queensland in, uh, you saw that in episode one, I sort of had an intention of where I was going to put it, what I was going to do with it. And, and then in episode two, you saw Sam, my son and I, putting in some posts. Those posts are, um, were my solution to to a shelter that uh, we'd purchased um, around about three months ago to uh, in, in, enclose the hull while we uh, laid it up and manufactured the entire boat. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to put a shipping container on the block. I would have taken up extra parking spots where uh, we're building it. So we, we sort of came up with that idea with the post to, uh, to support the, the, the tent. Um, and these tents are amazing. This is a Torto shelter. It's uh, a container shelter. It's eight meters wide. It's twelve meters long. And uh, and you'll see here the, the the forklift unloading this orange box. It's an eight hundred kilo box that comes delivered as it is. And that's the entire roof uh, that you'll see the time lapse of the, uh, shortly in the video. Um, so we we began putting this uh, uh, structure together. It took us probably four or five days to, to do the whole job, I guess. It probably could have done a little quicker, but it is designed to be put up with nothing underneath it. So unfortunately, I already had the mould there, so we had to come up with a way to, to construct the frame uh, while the mould was there. And unfortunately, uh, we, we couldn't fit a scissor lift or even a cherry picker wouldn't um, sort of go across the ones that we could hire anyway without special licenses and you know OHS crews in the works. So we uh, luckily we've got a, a fellow across the road, Johnny, Johnny Malley, that's got a portable scaffold on wheels. This thing was fantastic. We assembled it up on the mould. We were able to roll it into place. Uh, even up on the bridge deck where the, the front of the bridge deck is, where it sort of curves up to the bow of the boat, um, we were able to adjust the height of it and get it level. And you'll see on the time lapse where we can physically uh, adjust the, the height of it. And I was able to stand on the top of that. And, and at one level, I was, it was a bit of a knee trembler for about three days. Honestly, I was aching all over from, um, from trembling, being sort of nine metres up in the air and assembling this thing and you see some sections where we got it wrong. There was uh, uh, ultimately we got to towards the end of the of the, the shelter build and you know we have people from all over the place come and have a look at this thing and, and they are an absolutely fantastic idea. Uh, for the money, I mean I mean I couldn't have built a shed for four times the value of it. So I've got a permanent shelter. We uh, were able to put it up you know, relatively quickly. We got the roof on, um, the, the actual fabric you'll see in the, in the time lapse, we pulled that over. It took around about 10 of us to pull it over. We had a lot of friction going on. Um, okay, we've got a, uh, a bit of a stop work meeting. There's a strike going on here. We've got, uh, got Tracy, Art, Neil, all wanting to work, but refusing because I don't pay enough. We've got Neil assembling someone's wiper motor by the look of it. Seatbelt. Seatbelt, sorry. Seat belt. Get Johnny at the appropriate lean angle. What do you reckon, Joel? Go on, say what you think. No. Shit house. Shit house, mate. That's shit house. That's Joel's standard response to shit house. We got 10 people uh, in, the, in the group there and we were able to reef that thing over. And we got it on and we're all standing there looking at it and, and then in about oh, about five minutes after we put it on and everyone had dissipated back to their respective jobs and luckily we've got a lot of, lot of guys there that were able to help us, um, I realised that I'd put that bastard on upside down 
It would stand to reason that if you were going to put a brand name on a product, i.e. a giant tent 40 foot long and 25 foot wide, you'd put the brand name on the outside so that passers-by could see the brand, to advertise the brand. Well, not this brand. The brand name, in fact, goes on the inside. And how we knew that was there's a whole bunch of eyelets that allow us to lash it to the frame. And um, the eyelets were on the outside. So that was a big problem. That uh, became a problem. So two weeks later, we were able to uh, you know, summon the, the, the guys again and we were able to do it again. And we put it on twice. You know, some days just beat you. But today I beat it. Look at that. Slashing down. Jesus, we got the roof on, honestly, the second it started pressing down. Like, but, uh, you know, we're talking inches and inches of rain over the last couple of weeks. This roof is my saviour. Thank Christ for a bunch of really good people. We had that 10 blokes here, Savo and Clint and Tracy and a couple of other guys. And, you know, just people driving along, giving the hand. Uh, we had to pull that roof back over because we put it on upside down because the eyelets were on the inside and the signage was on the outside. I mean, give me a break. But anyway, we've, uh, we've put it back over and as we did it, we had a monster storm. I mean, we're talking absolutely freaking lightning. I was up at eight meter ladder with lightning, you know, crazy stuff. So, you know, these are the sorts of things that just, you just take your head off and put a pumpkin on when you're doing shit like this, unfortunately. And uh, as a, as a, you know, a consequence, you do stupid things. So here we are with our roof back on. I've just tensioned it, and now we have it lashed end to end, which is, you know, fantastic. Isn't it? Two, three hour sessions of ceiling glazing. Uh, poor old Trace, pulled her in on the job for the day. What do you reckon? It's lunchtime. Lunchtime. <laughs> We're over it. So if you want to see more of this, check us out. Subscribe there. Click on that notification up there and you'll get all of my feed. But join us next time on Life on the Mold. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs>